Bay Farm is a magical farm sim set in the enchanted world of Azoria that you can enjoy on your own or with up to four players. It is out now on PC and the Nintendo Switch, so let's get you ready to play with some useful tips and tricks. Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. I'm Sarah Sunstone, and today I will be sharing some beginner tips and tricks for Fay Farm, but I'm not alone. I am delighted to be joined by the lovely Denise from her channel here on YouTube called Scene Stars Denise. Denise creates cozy, quality content that I think many of you will really love, so please be sure to go check out her channel and show her some love. Hey Denise, I got the wings out of storage, you know, to add a little pizzazz. Hope you all like it. Thanks so much for having me, Sarah. I share cozy indie game recommendations, news about upcoming cozy games, and game reviews. And I am particularly fond of story-based games and just about anything with magic, which is why I am so excited for Fay Farm. Sarah and I have been patiently waiting for Fay Farm and we're so excited for you all to finally try it as well. Hopefully some of these tips will help you on your journey through Azoria and without further ado, let's get started with Sarah's first tip. So before you even start playing Fay Farm, you'll want to set up a Phoenix Labs account. You can do so via the game's main menu and it is very simple, requiring no personal information. The main reason you want to create an account is because when you do so, you will actually select a name for your character. It's important to note that the name you choose will be used for all of your saves, so at this time you can't have different names for different saves unless they change it in an update. If you don't want to create a Phoenix Labs account, you don't have to, but you won't be able to access multiplayer features and your character name will either be automatically set to your Steam username or your Nintendo Switch name depending on the platform you choose to play. Now that you've selected your name and created your character, you're ready to dive into the world of Azoria, and I suggest using your first day in this new land to your advantage. You will have plenty of time on day one during your introductory tutorials because the game clock isn't actually activated yet. I would suggest using this time to explore the world at a leisurely pace, collect forageables, cook food, clear your farm, and seek out crafting recipes. The end of day and conclusion of chapter one will be activated once you complete the master marketing quest given by Pearl. In this quest, you must place three items out to sell at the market before turning into Mayor Merit. Once you've redeemed the quest with the mayor, that's it for day one. So just make sure you've done everything you'd like to get yourself oriented and to feel comfortable with the game's basic mechanics before the clock starts the next day. Once you've gotten everything all sorted out, you might want to find the mayor, but where is she? Now, I don't know about you, but I am pretty navigationally challenged. I get lost just about everywhere, but not to worry. If you're like me and have issues of finding people, you can open up your map and select the person you want to meet. And by doing this, you can track them down using the little guide on your screen regardless of where they are during the day. This little feature also works for certain locations such as the mines. The first time I went lucky for the mines, I embarrassingly enough got lost, so hopefully you don't have to struggle like I did. Now, going on an expedition to the mines or exploring Azoria is incredibly exciting exciting, but you want to make sure that you have enough room in your backpack for food, potions, and treasures that you'll find along the way. I already struggle with managing my IRL bag since I like to prepare it before I travel and just stuff everything in there. But thankfully, unlike real bags, your in-game backpack can be expanded up to three times so you can carry extra junk in your trunk. The first upgrade only costs 500 florins. The second upgrade will then cost 2,500 florins, which is a little bit pricier. And the last upgrade will cost Cost you a whopping 8,000 florins, but after a while, it's not too hard, and I was able to get the upgrade after a couple of days into the game. But if you're looking for more storage, you can always depend on your home storage, which has unlimited space for your junk, so you can hoard all the things to your heart's content. Once you've sorted out your inventory and have gathered all sorts of materials, you might want to start decorating. But how exactly do you craft items? There's no crafting bench for furniture, and your trusty almanac doesn't let you craft from your collection. Well, it's actually very simple, but easy to overlook. To craft an item, you will need to either enter your home or be standing on the customizable portion of your outdoor farmland, and then press C on your keyboard or the equivalent controller prompt to enter the construction interface. From here, you will press C again to open your build catalog where you can browse through the crafting recipes you have unlocked so far. I know this might sound obvious, it literally shows you what to do 
on the screen, but I personally was a little confused about the system to begin with, so I'm betting there's at least one other person out there that this tip could help. Further, if you're wondering how to place furniture items on the walls, you just need to stand up against the wall to place it and you're good to go. And if you accidentally craft something you didn't mean to, or realized you didn't really like the item as much as you thought you would, or just changed your mind, it's no problem. You can actually reclaim items by pressing Q, and the materials used will be returned to you. This is such a great feature. You're not alone, Sarah. I was a little confused, not gonna lie, about the crafting system myself when I started to. But now that you all know how to craft decorations, furniture, and more, you might wanna know where you can find additional recipes. These recipes for decorations, furniture, rugs, and paths that can be later crafted to make your home feel a little cozier are hidden all over the world, including on top of rooftops and corners. So keep your eyes peeled. Recipes are incredibly useful in increasing your cozy count when decorating your house. You might be thinking, Denise, what the heck is a cozy count and why should I even care? Well, I'm glad you asked. When you return home from a busy day out to a well-decorated house full of cozy furniture, you can recharge your health, mana, or stamina. The higher your cozy count, the faster your health, stamina, or mana are regenerated when you relax at home. So you can continue your adventures at peak health. Now, even though you can find tons of crafting recipes around the world, there are plenty of others that you will actually need to buy. And in early game, you might be wondering what you should sell and what you should keep. I would recommend keeping any important crafting resources like wood, stone, clay, and plant fibers. I would also suggest keeping some of the different beach scavengeables, specifically shells and corals, because they only respawn every two days and you might need them for quests. So keep a supply on hand, but then sell extras if you would like. The mussels specifically, you will be able to find plenty of in the caves as well as on the beaches, so you should be well stocked. What I would suggest selling in early game are simple cooked foods. Definitely don't sell berries, arugula, or mussels for example unless you've cooked them first, because doing so will increase the amount of florins you will receive for them. Once you're a bit further in the game and have unlocked the mines, you should prioritize crafting a gem polisher to polish raw crystals for selling. Sarah makes a really good point. Be strategic in what you sell because the amount of things you can sell will be limited to the amount of table space there is in the town square, and you won't be able to receive the money until the next morning. You can unlock the selling feature after you've completed the little introductory quest at the beginning of the game. However, if you need more space to sell your wares, you can unlock more space to sell things by buying more stands from Pearl, the chairwoman of the Merchant's Guide. This feature is unlocked through a side quest aptly named More Is More. Now remember, it is not all about money. You will also need to focus on stamina management as you complete tasks around Azoria, which means you'll want to keep some of your cooked food to eat and replenish your stamina. If you run out of food, you can actually come across green wisps at night that will give you extra boosts of stamina when you move through them. There's actually quite a lot of these spots scattered around the world, so definitely keep your eyes peeled and interact with them when you need them. If you still happen to run out of stamina, the good news is you won't pass out. You simply won't be able to partake in any activity that require energy, but you can still spend the rest of your day collecting forageables, decorating, processing materials, or just exploring. And if you find yourself out wandering at night or on a mission, don't worry about spending time to run back home and get to bed. When the clock strikes midnight, the game will just end the day for you with no punishment and you'll respawn right back into your house to start the next day. Oof. Thank goodness, cause I hate the stress of running back home before I pass out. Now I'm sure some of you might just wanna like go, 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 but going through the mines and hitting rock after rock to find a switch to the next level is taking far too long, okay? Well, if this is an issue for you, I have a solution. You can create a seal crafting station to make all sorts of seals that allow you to teleport to the next level after placing the seal on the pedestal in the mines. You can start making seals after you unlock the mines and accept the dungeon devil request from Cleo. Once you've crafted a seal crafting station, you make all sorts of seals that will unlock different levels in the mines, including the copper seal, hammered copper seal, embossed copper seals, as well as their iron counterparts, and much more. Note that when unlocking each level in the mine using the seal, you want to start at the first level because there are a couple of steps to unlock the following pedestals, which includes a seal or two, and that you've already unlocked the pedestals from the previous level. Back to you, Sarah. Well, there you have it, friends. Those were 10 beginner tips 
tips and tricks to get you started on your Fay Farm adventures. Thank you so much, Denise, for joining me today. Again, my friends, please be sure to show her some love and let me know down in the comments your thoughts on this magical game. Anything and everything, you know I always love hearing from you. Please give the video a like if you found these tips and tricks helpful. And with all that being said, thank you so much for watching. I love you all. And until next time, take care. And a very special thanks to Meredith, Formotus, Tansy, Cisco, Cheese, Divine Raven, Blossom, Paul, Jack, Danny, Starry Days, Kimmy, Dream, Becca, Kayla, Isonal, Wolf, Bumble, Salem, Zaries, Anime Lover, Ember, Lawrence, and Fabiola, my beautiful Sunstone members. I love you all very much and thank you so, so much for the extra support on the channel, which really helps to make all that I do possible means the world to me. 